held the bank. It was definitely not painful. Um, essentially, I can car shop now. Like, based on what he said, I'm in pretty good state. Like, they trust me. <laughs> what? Uh, anyway. Okay. Okay, but I'm not going to get too excited because the next thing is going to actual dealership websites and seeing how big the loan would be. If I could find like a post 2015 car for under 20,000. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay. Let's see here. I kind of want to look now. I was going to I was going to draw, but I want to do this. I actually want to look at cars. I think actually the next thing I need to do is sell my car and get that cash because that cash will be very helpful in case I need to put money down. Um, I need to clean out my car. It's super hot today, but I kind of want to do it just so it's done. It's time to vacuum. I don't have like a proper car vacuum or a long extension cord, so... Anyway, car, front door. <laughs> Should be able to make this work. <laughs> The car is clean and I took pictures so I can list it. I felt kind of sad. <laughs> Incidentally, that's the car that I've been borrowing. It's my brother's. It's immensely fun to drive. I'm actually kind of sad that I can't. I can't keep it, but. <sighs> All right. But I think I'm done for the day. <laughs> it's about three o'clock and I am sweaty and I am tired. Hello, everybody. It's voiceover miss mark um so a couple notes about this month i didn't really film it in a way that made it super clear but there were kind of two major things in july um the first was that my car finally bit the dust <laughs> it's kind of been in the um nursing along stages for a while but around mid-july i found out that i had a blown or leaking head gasket which is was kind of the last straw <laughs> Um, so during July, I was both trying to sell my old car and hunt for a new one. So that was kind of an overlying motif for the month. But on a much more positive note, what you're going to see here pretty soon is I decided with two weeks toward before the deadline, I decided to enter into Webtoon's call to action contest. So in two weeks, I drew a comic of like 60... 4, 65 panels, um, which was intense, but extremely exciting. So yeah, I just wanted to jump in here real quick and be like, that's what's happening in July. It was a bit crazy, but I made it through and all's well that ends well. I'll just say that. <laughs> Okay, so this contest. I had known about the contest for a while, but at the beginning of July, I just kind of immediately was like, nope, I don't have time to draw a comic. And also it's supposed to be an action scene. I just didn't feel inspired to do that at all. Um, so most of July goes on. And then the last two weeks of July, most of those, well, yeah, last two weeks, I had no nannying. Everyone I worked for was like on vacation or they just didn't need me those weeks for whatever reason. So I suddenly had like two complete weeks off after finally buying a car. And I had this idea for Sugar Serpent. I've been working on Sugar Serpent for a while, but I had this idea for a scene from Sugar Serpent that I could do. And once it hit me, I just, I it was almost like I felt terrified of not doing it. <laughs> 
Like, my first thought wasn't, oh, that would be fun. My first thought was, oh, I'm going to hate my life if I don't try to do this. So I decided to go for it. Um, my process for this was a little bit different. I tried something um, I've been wanting to do, which is doing most of the rough draft and the penciling on actual paper instead of doing it digitally. And this was mainly because I know that with pencil, I can actually... My workflow is actually better because when I work digitally, I get too hung up on the details. Like I zoom way in and I start polishing things way early on when you shouldn't be polishing, you should be roughing out. Um, But with pencils, I don't do that. Like I just bleached through all of the panels in a couple of days because I wasn't polishing them. So uh, the other thought was essentially I just didn't want to be on a screen (laughs) the whole time. So I roughed out and penciled the entire comic on paper. So for the rough stage where I was just doing the layout, I did it on regular copy paper. And then I went, I put tracing paper on top of it to do my, you know, kind of more clean pencil work. And then I just took pictures. I didn't scan or anything. I just took photos of um, the tracing paper, put that into my iPad, and then went to inking. Um... But yeah, I basically started this whole process about two weeks um, before the deadline. And then it occurred to me after I'd started and convinced myself to do this, I decided to one last time go check the guidelines (laughs) to see if there was any rules about, you know, length. And yeah, there was. It had to be at least 60 panels. My usual Dazer and Eleanor panels are at most, at most half of that. So I said, I sort of had this like wheezing (laughs) desperate moment when I read that because I was already all hyped to do it. I was going to do it. And I just suddenly realized that it was going to be twice as long as my like longest Days and Eleanor episode. (laughs) So, uh, 60, my comic ended up being 64 panels. So I, I even went overboard. Um, But yeah, 64-something panels in two weeks was brutal, but kind of in the best way possible. I feel like it's pretty rare, especially as an artist whose, you know, day job is not art. It's pretty rare to have an opportunity where you just get to, like, pull out all the stops and go into, like, I don't know, beast mode. (laughs) Or just, like, every day when I got up, my brain was going on this comic and not... Not in a bad way. Like, I just woke up just super excited to work on it. Like, just get back to it. Um, it was really hard. And there were lots of moments where it felt very boring and I doubted it. But um, because I wasn't working at my day job, I had, like, two weeks where I could just be 100% comic artist. Which was amazing. <laughs> there was a bit of a downside to it, though, because... Uh, I'm just rambling through as you watch all this footage. The downside to it was uh, for the first few days afterwards, I didn't feel burnt out. Kind of the opposite. I felt more like disillusioned with my day job for a little bit. You know, I made the decision years ago that I did not want to be a freelance artist unless I could just draw my own stuff. You know, like a super successful Patreon or something like that or getting published. I did not want to work for like full-time for clients but having this two-week period where I got to be basically a full-time artist if only for two weeks just be full-time comicking uh I felt like sad (laughs) when it was over because it was amazing it was amazing that my brain could just be in comic mode all day every day so yeah it was bittersweet I guess um now I'm recording this in August. Uh, now I'm back to work and I've gotten, I've kind of, instead of feeling sad that I have a day job, I decided to like let that feed my motivation to be more disciplined about my schedule um, and my routine. So I'm very disciplined now about getting up early and having time to do something before I go to work and then getting something done when I get home. You know, it just, I let that, I let that, um, sort of disappointment turn into, well, what can I do 
to really maximize my comic making potential. <laughs> so that's a plus. Um, let's see, two weeks of solid comic making. I mean, this was, I drew as much as I physically could draw without hurting myself for these two weeks. I was also dog sitting. That added to the uh, magic of the experience. I just basically got to borrow a dog who would sit with me while I drew. That was pretty cool. Um, I surprisingly did not feel burnt out. I kind of thought, you know, I was setting myself up for burnout. Um, and I think the reason I did not feel burnt out is I did actually take fairly long breaks. You know, without the pressure of a day job, I didn't feel like I had to spend all my free time doing comics. Like I would, um, my routine was <laughs> it's so amazing. I would get up in the morning, do a little bit of uh, reading, and then take the dog for like an hour long walk and then come back and start on comics. And we would just sit on the back porch. She would sit with me and we would just draw comics for like two hours. And then I would take an hour long break, walk around with her again, get some food, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I would go back to it for another two hours, take another break, eat dinner, <laughs> or take a break until dinner, and then continue again for another two hours. So I, I, I didn't, I probably put in about six or seven hours a day, but I had like hour long breaks. And because I didn't have a day job, it was okay to space it out that way. I didn't have to like cram in my only four free hours for the day and do it all in once. So I think good breaks helped. Um, but also, I don't know if I necessarily have control over this. I feel like I'm kind of at the mercy of my art. I also really like the way the comic looks. And I kept waiting for, like, a panel that would kind of kill the motivation. Like, the panel that, you know, you were disappointed in or it's not your best, but you gotta move on. And I just felt like every panel was, in some way, fun. <laughs> Which is highly unusual. I rarely have that with Dazer and Eleanor. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to fill in all this footage with some ramblings and kind of my thoughts. Um, bottom line, do I recommend marathoning comic production like this? Kinda yeah. If you've never tried it, I definitely think you should try it once. Where like you clear your calendar as much as possible and just give comic making your all and see what happens. <laughs>
to do a flare. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's up. I don't have any subscribers yet. <laughs> to this series. Can I subscribe? I subscribed. Okay. Last thing before I go. I was testing it out. Looking at the uh, episode on my phone. Obviously it looks kind of weird in the camera. But I... I like it. Oh man. I feel really proud of it. I just feel like, uh... I knew I wanted Sugar Serpent to have a different feel from Dazer and Eleanor. And I kind of, I, like, I knew what I was going for, but I didn't know how to like specifically describe it. Um, so looking at this, I feel like this is, this is what I wanted it to be. I'm super happy with it. It's a weird feeling because I'm not, I'm not so confident in it that I'm like, I'm definitely going to win. But I am extremely proud of it and... I'm, even if I don't win anything, I'm super glad that I did this. I love this panel. <laughs> this feels really weird because it's not Dazer and Eleanor. Like, Dazer and Eleanor, I already have like almost 4,000 subscribers. Yeah, I have 3,971 subscribers on Dazer and Eleanor. So when I post, I am used to getting like 6 to 15 comments, comments right away and lots of likes and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't have that <laughs> for this comic. It's also weird because I'm used to social media, like people just follow me and anytime I post anything they see it. On webtoons you don't follow the artist per se. You might be able to do that now. But the idea is you subscribe to series, you don't subscribe to an artist. So nobody knows about this yet. <laughs> All right. This is the end of the vlog. <laughs> I actually filmed so much of this comic making process. I almost wish I did like a documentary style vlog where I was more in detail about what I was doing and more talking to the camera while I drew. Um, but I was just so focused. I, I couldn't chat with the camera. I just had to sit down and draw, which is fine. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this process was pretty amazing, and like I said earlier, I'm pulling some lessons about discipline and motivation from this experience. Um, I wanted to get this vlog up sooner so that you guys, you know, if you don't follow me anywhere else, you guys could learn about it, go over and check it out during the contest, but, um, I don't know if this is enough time. If this video goes up tonight, the 29th, there's still some time. Essentially, if it is still August 2022, um, you can go to the link in my description, read Sugar Serpent. It's okay if you don't like it, but if you could rate it as if you do like it, that would be swell. <laughs> um, and then share it with your friends. And honestly, even if the contest is over, um, I'm still really, really proud of the comic, and I very much want to continue it someday once Dazer and Eleanor is done, I guess? I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah. The link is in the description, though, so you should go read it. It's very fun. It's very pretty colors. It's a win-win. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. It took me a while to get this vlog put together. August is almost over now, so I've got to put together that vlog. Um, but I wanted to get this out, wanted to share it. Hope you liked it. If you've been waiting for the sign that you should take comics more seriously, this is it. This is the sign you've been waiting for. Get serious about comics and make something even if it seems insane. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, real quick before we go, shout out to my patrons who have been enjoying slash tolerating all of my concept work for Sugar Serpent. They have seen character sheets, they have seen concept art, doodles, paintings, sketches, everything. And they are so supportive and so enthusiastic. So a big thank you to them. And then thank you to everyone who watches my videos and my vlogs and follows me and reads my comics. It means a lot to have readers. Comics, I feel like, don't mean anything unless you have readers, so 
shout out to you guys. <laughs> shout out to everyone. Everyone give yourself a shout out. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. This is the end of the vlog. I will see you in the next video.